Welcome everybody to Cartridge Talks. Ryan, I feel like we're on an episode of HotOrNot.com Cartridges Edition. Today we have the 7mm PRC versus the not so hot 7 rim mag. Well, you may be wondering why I'm wearing gloves and why we have hand sanitizer on the table. And that is because I have a strong public disdain toward the 7mm Remington Magnum, which we'll get into later. Ryan, neither of us really like this cartridge. I don't know why. It's a great, a lot of people love it. Let's start the comparison. Right, let's get more square. Now, a couple caveats before we kick this off. First and foremost, we are using box-posted muzzle velocities, box-posted ballistic coefficient values for calculating our drop and drift. We're also setting a base weight of eight pounds per rifle. Now, they are very similar, but not exactly. We're gonna do this so that we can calculate foot-pounds of recoil energy as evenly and stevenly as possible. We're also gonna be shooting into a medium called permagel, which while an imperfect medium is extremely consistent, also very translucent. So we can see those little bullets when they hit that target. Without further ado, let's head to the range. All right, first up out of the seven millimeter PRC, we've got Hornady Precision Hunter with their 175 grain ELDX projectile. Let's send this thing down range and have a look. All right, no complaints here. This bullet did a lot of damage. Lost some material along the way, but that's to be expected with this type of construction. It's built to be able to expand at long range and close range. Good penetration here. We got 25 and a half inches. I'd say that's one dead critter. Second on the list here is Browning's X-Bolt, chambered in, believe it or not, seven millimeter Remington Magnum. I'll be shooting the Hornady Precision Hunter 162 grain ELDX. Right, it doesn't get more square. There was so much concussion on that. Like 26 inches of penetration. Really good wound cavity. I, I'm actually quite impressed. All right, next up, out of the very intelligently designed 7mm PRC, we have Hornady's Outfitter ammo loaded with their 160 grain CX bullet. Very notable BC on this thing for a bullet of this type of construction. Let's send it down range and see how it does. All right, very impressive and to be expected, deep penetrating performance. We've got 36 and a half inches of penetration, excellent expansion. This bullet definitely drove deep, did a great job. All right, back at the bench with the seven millimeter Remington Magnum, this time with Hornady's Outfitter line, 150 grain CX copper alloy projectile. No shock and no surprise, we've got better penetration than the cup and core counterpart at 33 and a quarter inches. Oh my God, okay. So here's the deal, we just fired the last round of cartridge talks today and they entrusted me to hold this camera one-handed while on a scooter. This is a terrible idea. I'm not good at sports. I am fascinated with shooting though, so we're gonna take a look at that gel block. Boardman, how you doing back there? I'm doing good. I'm terrified. This is rather exciting. Um, my anxiety right now is at a 7.7. .7. You're doing great. Oh, wow. What do you think happened? Um, it was a good You're hit. We're vlogging. We're vlogging. You're vlogging. It's a good You're hit. Stop! Stop. Like, they won't let me go up there and look at it yet. Like, stop like the grapefruit. <sighs> you did it, Mark. That was awesome. So good. So good. All right, we're going up. Oh, my gosh. We're doing it live. And here we go. This is the 150 grain CX into the gel block. I'm hyper exposed right now and I can't see anything. There's a lot of light. A lot yeah. of light. Mark, cartridge socks. We're doing it. Woo! All right, we're back from the range. We're done shooting, so we might as well talk a little bit 
about shootability. Ryan, you were shooting your trusty 7mm rim mag. I was shooting the modern 7mm PRC. Now we're talking about foot pounds of energy. You know, like you said, you use that eight pound rifle base weight. Uh, out of the 7 meg, you were running this 162 grain ELDX. I was running the 175 grain ELDX. Uh, you came out with 26.74 foot pounds of energy. I did have 29.32, but I'd say that's a negligible margin and uh, had a significantly larger bullet. I'll say this, shooting both of them, the 7 PRC felt very subjectively softer. I don't know why, but it did. And really, we do have a very even comparison between these rifles. They, like you said, they are nearly identical. So it's kind of curious that you felt that shooting a heavier bullet out of essentially the same gun. It felt like a slower push. This was a sharper pop. If we look at the numbers, 7mm Rem Mag wins the shootability category because it does have less foot pounds of recoil energy. Uh, don't take my word for it. I like the 7 PRC better. I'll take your word for it. Okay, let's talk about accessibility of these two cartridges, Mark. Now, accessibility we're quantifying by looking at the factory loaded options from the major six ammunition manufacturers. That's Winchester, Federal, Remington, Hornady, Nosler, and Barnes. Here again, the seven millimeter Remington Magnum being on scene for a long time is gonna pull ahead with a 38 to six lead. Okay, now the seven PRC is a very new cartridge. It was released just last year. Uh, it, it's getting there, right? It's getting there. Nonetheless, 7mm Remington Magnum has been around probably too long. It has 38 factory chamberings available from those six major manufacturers to the 7 PRC's six. Even right now, Ryan, I would ask, is that 32 too many? When you look at the offerings in the PRC, even right now, they're gonna do everything you need that bolt to do, and they're gonna do it better but you can still get more seven millimeter Remington Magnum right now. Ah, you can still get more, but if I was a betting man, I'm betting on this horse to catch up right away. Seven millimeter Remington wins the accessibility category. So the seven Rem Mag beats the seven PRC handily when it comes to total factory offerings. But let's look at the bullets that we're pushing out of these cases. I mean, nearly identical. The seven Rem Mag is 139 grain to 175. The seven PRC, 140 to 180. I mean pretty much the same, but the PRC is doing it better. Well, Mark, I, I'm not telling you I'm gonna defend the seven millimeter Rem Mag, certainly not on television, but there is nothing that the seven PRC can do that the seven Rem Mag can, really, when we're looking at practical hunting distances. As long as that shooter's running the right bullet, I don't know. Ryan, we both know the seven Rem Mag is a little bit long in the tooth because the 7 PRC has way more style. Mark, are you talking like show style or like bullet style? <sighs> Elaborate. Well, if we're talking bullet style, 7 Rem Mag is definitely gonna pull away on this one. There's 37 different bullet profiles out there for the American consumer to pick from, six in the 7 PRC. But I'll say this, the 7 millimeter PRC case was designed and developed to handle these longer, heavier, higher ballistic coefficient, higher sectional density bullets that the 7 Rem Meg could really only do if the hand loader was using it and the hand loader had a rifle that was twisted for it. While it has less, it might be a little more optimized. I do argue though that the 7 millimeter Rem Meg shooter has quite a palette and quite a bit more versatility to pick from in that category, numbers notwithstanding. Lots to pick from, but you better pick the right choice. And in my opinion, it's the 7 PRC. Like you said, modern cartridge design, modern technology, modern propellants. This thing's got it all. It's the modern do-all. The 7 millimeter Remington Magnum still does have more and thusly is the winner of this category. So the 7 Rem Mag has won every point in regards to our evaluation criteria up until this point, Ryan. But I have good news. It's completely irrelevant because it's time to talk about drop and drift, long range performance, which the 7 PRC beats the 7 Rem Mag in that category. I've got uh, 7.6 MOA of elevation adjustment at 500 yards, 2.0 MOA of windage, considering a 10 mile an hour full value crosswind. And I maintain 2147 foot pounds of energy. That's a lot. That's pretty good, Mark. I'm just behind you. 
uh, 8.2 MOA of vertical re correction requirement for the 500 yard target. Uh, 2.3 of windage, it's a measly 0.3 MOA advantage that you have. It's an advantage, but it's like that much. And I'm still bringing 1,811 foot-pounds of energy to target at 500 yards. You cannot dispute this is a perfectly adequate cartridge for the long range hunter. And you cannot dispute that the seven PRC wins in this category and it's gonna win even better the further it gets out. All those teeth and no toothbrush. All right, Mark, you had mentioned one time with respect to another cartridge that we've talked about in this series, uh, Paper Tiger, if you will. And I believe that's the situation we may have here. So why don't we get out the gelatin and see what that tells us about terminal performance. Let's have a look. And we're back. We've cued the gels. Mark is deliberating over the depth of penetration on the seven millimeter PRC because he noticed that it is curiously less I, than mine. I think we should remeasure. I'd like, does anybody have a measuring tape? Nope, it's too late. The seven millimeter rem mag, this is 162 grain ELDX, hit this block, it gave me 26 inches of penetration, outstanding permanent wound cavity, a little bit of fragmentation, although it is a thin taper jacket, somewhat expected. Uh, and there's my bullet, held pretty well together. Right at uh, 26, huh? Well, I had a 175 grain ELDX. I'd say highly similar performance, one inch less penetration, big deal. I don't know, Mark, that one inch could be the difference between, you know, a hit and a miss. It's better. It's not, it's less. It is in fact less. You have 25 and a half inches, I have 26. Focus group of one, not enough data. You're invalidating our tests simply because you're losing. Because I want this to win. Oh, well, in this case, no. But we did fire two bullets. We also fired a copper option in Hornady's CX. Well, let's have a look at those then. Cue the copper and cue this declaration. For a guy who has an ardent disdain for the seven rem mag, you sure defend that damn thing a lot. I thought you'd have my back, for God's sakes. Mark, it was in my corner, and uh, I'm betting on that horse because it's in my corner. You don't have to do that, Ryan, because when it comes to your beloved copper, the 7 PRC did better. I've got 36 and a half inches of penetration. Uh, what's the uh, 7 Remig doing? Well, 33 and a quarter, but, but you are using a revolutionarily new bullet, higher weight, higher BC, higher SD. I'm shooting a lighter weight bullet. It's 150 grain CX. You're shooting the new 160 CX. You should have more penetration. Yeah, which is better. Okay, well, so you get a half a point for this test. I get a half a point for the other test. We come to a tie, an impasse, Mark. And again, once again, I am benefiting from modern technology, modern cartridge design, modern projectiles. But you didn't on the last one. Let's talk about the here and now. And speaking of the here and now, which cartridge wins the day today? Let's rack them up, Mark. Shootability. <sighs> Seven rim mag. Accessibility. Seven rem mag. Versatility? Seven rem mag. Drop and drift? Seven PRC. Terminal performance? Tie. Half a point each. That is three and a half to one and a half. Did I miss anything there? The fact that I literally do not care. This is the better cartridge. This is the better solution. This is the only way, this is gonna be a relic in three years. This is still the way to go. I don't care about your points. I care about the tens of thousands of shooters across this great nation that already own the seven millimeter Remington Magnum. Despite my personal feelings on the cartridge, this is not a personal attack. This is a viable cartridge for a century to come. On paper, it wins the versatility category. In practicality, it doesn't. This is a way better cartridge for short range and long range shooting. For the recreational shooter that wants to stretch their distance, maximize their effective range, even beyond 500 yards, there I said it, this is the better choice. Hmm, mm hmm So higher cost of ammunition too, huh? Irrelevant, oh. hunting is expensive. Well, for all of you listening, Mark recommends you get rid of your very uh, you know, well used and familiar equipment and replace it with something almost exactly the same. It's capable, this is a better solution. Oh, sure. Well, there you have it, folks. Seven millimeter Remington Magnum, I said it, trumps the seven millimeter PRC. Maybe not for long though. Mark is right. The seven PRC is a very up and coming cartridge. 
I have a couple of 7 millimeter options that I've entertained over the years. I recently built the 280 Ackley. If the 7 PRC existed when I built that rifle, I probably would have gone that direction. But I didn't, uh, so I have a 280 Ackley. We should put that one into the mix. Ooh, that'd be a good one too. Maybe. There you have it, folks. We've tallied the numbers. Yes, the 7 Rem Mag won. A little bit of contention here. Tune into the Vortex Nation podcast where Ryan and I probably argue and banter even more about this comp comparison that I'm just not done yet. Deal. <laughs>